nearly three decades, the Apache's status as the world's premier attack helicopter remains largely unchallenged, and the type continues to see extensive action in the Middle East and in demand in countries as diverse as the UK, Egypt, India and Taiwan. The $35 million armored attack helicopter, which can pack as many as 16 tank-busting missiles under its stub wings, remains supreme. The Apache's origins date back to the United States' withdrawal from the Vietnam War, as the Army turned its attention back to the huge mechanized armies of the Warsaw Pact. Helicopter gunships had proven highly useful in Vietnam for delivering precise strikes and loitering air support, but relatively lightly armed Viet Cong had shot down hundreds of them. The Red Army mustered heavier anti-aircraft defenses and huge tank armies that would not be phased by miniguns and anti-personnel rockets. Seeking a helicopter fit to tackle Soviet tank division, the Army ultimately had to choose between the Bell YAH-63, which resembled a stretched-out Cobra, and the McDonnell Douglas YAH-64. Disliking the former's tricycle landing gear and two-shaft rotor, the Army selected the YAH-64 in 1976. Per custom, and even regulation, permission was obtained from Apache elders to name the helicopter after the Native American tribe. The AH-64's tandem seats situate the pilot higher to the rear while a weapons officer and co-pilot sat closer to the nose. Though both can fly the chopper, the pilot uses a PNVS wide-angle infrared night vision system for navigation, while the gunner employs a rotating TADS targeting system, combining zoomable infrared cameras with a laser target mounted in a turret on the Apache's nose. The crew are protected by 2,500 pounds of light boron plating and Kevlar lined seats, protecting them from ubiquitous 12.7mm machine guns and 23mm flak cannons, while the fuel tanks have self sealing protection system. Both laser and radar warning receivers alert the crew to imminent missile attacks, and a rotor mounted ALQ 144A, disco ball, infrared jammer can help MIS direct heat seeking missiles. Two 1,700 horsepower T700 GE701 turboshafts, slung on each side of the fuselage in heat signature reducing pods, turn the four bladed main and tail rotors made of steel and composite materials, allowing speeds of 182 miles per hour, a service ceiling of 21,000 feet, and an endurance of 150 minutes. Despite weighing nearly 9 tons loaded, the Apache proved exceptionally agile, capable of pulling off barrel rolls and loops. The Apache's stub wings each mount two pylons typically carrying a mix of pods carrying 19 2.75-inch rockets for use against personnel and light vehicles, and quad racks of AGM-114 Hellfire anti-tank missiles. For precisely strafing personnel targets lightly armored vehicles, the Apache mounts a hydraulically operated M230 chain gun under its chin which can rattle out 5 to 10 30mm high explosive dual purpose shells per second, with 1200 M789 shells carried in a looping feed mechanism. The AH-64A entered service in 1986, with 821 eventually delivered through 1996. These initially imposed heavy new maintenance demands on army mechanics. First seeing action at night during the 1989 U.S. intervention in Panama, only two years later in the Gulf War did the Apache's capabilities truly became evident. The 278 AH-64 as deployed destroyed 500 armored vehicles for the loss of just one chopper to a rocket-propelled grenade. Despite its successes, the AH-64A remained a product of analog-era technology. After cancelling AH-64A Plus and B upgrades, the Army finally committed to the heavily modernized AH-64D variant with color digital flight displays, modem-based datalinks, and a new GPS and Doppler radar navigation systems. The D model's best known innovation, however, was an optional drum-shaped APG-78, longbow, redome on a mast atop the Apache's rotor used to target the radar-guided AGM-114L missiles up to 5 miles away. The longbow's raised position allowed an Apache to track multiple air or ground targets while hovering concealed behind trees or hills. Later Apaches also received modernized Arrowhead MTAD sights, and some could carry Stinger heat-seeking missiles on the tips of their wing stubs, 
for use against helicopters, drones and slow-flying aircraft. Apache longbows proved many times more deadly and survivable than the AH-64 as in exercises, so the Army upgraded 501 the new model, and retired the remaining un-upgraded AH-64 as in 2012. However, the added weight of the longbow did diminish speed and altitude performance. Apache exported abroad also saw considerable, high-profile action. For example, Ibn 2002, the IDF controversially debuted a new tactic of using Apache-fired Hellfire missiles like high-collateral damage sniper rifles to assassinate Hamas leaders. Israeli Apaches have also twice engaged aerial targets, shooting down a civilian Cessna and an Iranian stealth drone. The United Kingdom, meanwhile, license manufactured 67 of its own Augusta Westland Apaches with Rolls-Royce RTM-322 turboshafts and punchier CRV-7 rockets. These two have seen extensive action over Iraq and Afghanistan. Two were even once used to land a team of four commandos strapped to the stub wings. The Apache continues to evolve in the 21st century. The latest AH-64E Guardian model boasts uprated engines, remote drone control capabilities, and a sensors designed to highlight muzzle flashes on the battlefield below. The Army has also experimentally deployed Apaches on US Navy ships and had them practice anti-ship missions, and even tested a laser-armed Apache. Following the retirement of OH-58D Kiowa Scout helicopters, AH-64S have been pressed into reconnaissance units, controversially sourced at the expense of National Guard units. However, the heavy attack helicopters have not proven a great fit for the scouting role, so a dedicated scout helicopter is being sought to replace them. As short-range air defense systems grow increasingly deadly, and attack helicopters more costly, the survivability of even the Apache on 21st century battlefields remains open to question. However, the attack helicopter's ability to ferret out and battlefield targets and hammer them with precision missiles remains highly valued. Therefore, the Army plans to keep flying Apaches into the 2040s, by which time a new generation of future vertical lift choppers may eventually assume their mantle.